Hey everyone, it's Kyle. I know it's been a while since I did my last update, so I just wanted to get on here, update you guys on the last couple weeks of my pregnancy. Um, I think it's weeks 24, 25, 26, and 27. Um, currently I'm 28 weeks and two days. I'm officially in the third trimester, which is such a relief. Um, once you get to this point, like where you pass viability, you still feel like it can be ripped away from you at any second and it's scary but now that you're in the third trimester and the baby has some weight on him it's kind of like a relief like if he does come he does have a chance to survive and um, even though it would be extremely early if he came now but you just get to this point where you can finally start to enjoy the pregnancy rather than you know constantly worry if everything's okay so um, I have the symptoms written down, but everything's just kind of mushed together. I mean, that's how pregnancy is anyway. For me, it's been, I have, you know, a symptom one week, it doesn't go away the next week and I get a new one. It's kind of all together and so I'm just going to read them as they are. But I've had dry nasal passages for a while now, um, bleeding gums, heartburn, round ligament pain, Braxton Hicks, which are kind of new, and insomnia, which I've had. I'd say three or four times in the past couple weeks. Um, the Braxton Hicks contractions, if you've never had them before or if you don't know if you had them, I feel like the best way I can describe what's happening or what they feel like to me is your stomach gets ridiculously hard, like a rock. And it feels like a lot of pressure, like pushing outwards. Like at first I thought, he had his butt against like the front of my stomach pushing outwards and I thought that's why my stomach was so hard um, and I feel like my chest gets tighter like it's a little bit harder for me to breathe or like a shallow heartbeat almost like there's some kind of like tightening going on and um, once I looked back at like what that feeling was I realized I've been having Braxton Hicks for a while now probably Maybe around even 18 or 19 weeks I felt them, but I didn't know that's what I was feeling. I just thought like it was like a stretching motion or something, or maybe the baby was moving. I never really knew, but now that I know that's what it is, they come pretty frequently, <laughs> frequently, but I don't know if that's because I know what they are now or if it's just because I'm bigger. I, I don't, I don't know. So I actually have a doctor's appointment tomorrow and I am going to bring it up only because I actually started timing them. Um, there was a point where they were coming every 15 minutes and I had drank a lot of water. I wasn't dehydrated. I had changed positions. So it wasn't, you know, just because I was sitting a certain way. And um, the only other thing I could think of as why they were coming that frequently is because I was so exhausted. And Braxton Hicks is kind of a way of telling your body like to slow down a little bit. So maybe that's why I was having them like that. I haven't had them since. Um, I mean, I still get them, but I haven't had them like that frequently together since like a couple of days ago. So I'll bring it up to the doctor, but I think it's just part of pregnancy and a bunch of factors can contribute to why it occurs. Um, I've also had insomnia and... It's for me, insomnia is like crazy. Like I don't feel like myself at all because it's four in the morning and it feels like it's eleven and eleven in the morning. Like you're just you're wide awake. <laughs> you could clean the whole house, you could do laundry. It's like you have energy to just do stuff. And I've never been like that. I mean I've stayed up really, really late at times, but I've never been able to like go the entire full day, no sleep. Um the last time it occurred, I slept from 7 a.m. to 9 a.m. and then had to go to work. And that's, like, awful. It is to have those two hours of sleep and then have to work, like, full time. Um, that's been really hard. And thank God it's only happened a couple times. And it was only one time that happened during um, the work week. The other times it happened during the weekend, which was nice because I was able to, like, nap later on. Excuse me, burping is also a symptom. <laughs> um, so those have been the symptoms for the past four weeks I've been having. And um, I also had my gestational diabetes test done. And before I go into like what my results were, I'm sure all of you guys know anyway if you're on my Facebook. But um, the drink is orange. 
and it tastes like flat orange soda. Everyone freaked me out about this drink for so long and how gross it is. Um, even my best friend said she would rather have to go through delivery of a baby again than ever have to drink that stuff. She said she gagged on every single sip. And to me, it honestly was like, I, I mean, I kind of liked it. It wasn't bad at all. I mean, I wouldn't pick it to like drink it as like a normal drink, but it really honestly wasn't bad at all. So if you have that coming up, do not freak out about it. It's not bad. Um, I did pass the test, the gestational part. I don't have any sugar issues. However, um, my platelets are low and I have to repeat the test in two weeks from now. So at this point, they don't know if my platelets are low because I was on baby aspirin this entire time or if my platelets are loaded for some other reason. So that's why they're retesting me. Um, I did stop the baby aspirin after that test was done and, you know, they saw that my platelets were low. At that point, I had no idea what it even meant to have low platelets. But um, it has to do with, you know, clotting and bleeding out. So they said if my number gets below, I think, 100,000, that is, like, puts me at high risk to bleed out during delivery. So they're going to retest me. And depending on what that number is, then we go from there. I have no idea what the treatment would be if my platelets were low or any of that stuff. I just know that they're on the low end. I'm at 125,000. So if it goes below 100,000, then we have some issues that we'll have to work on. But um, other than that, everything else is fine. And um, something I just wanted to address really quickly in this video, and I promise, or at least I promise to try not to ramble on, is um, overall, like physically, okay, overall this entire pregnancy has been easy compared to what I've seen. I mean, I've known people that get sick every single day, you know, three times a day, their entire pregnancy, or um, just overall, like not feeling well, or they've actually been sick, like with the flu or something during their pregnancy. And I've, I've had a very easy pregnancy. I've never once vomited. I've, I haven't gotten sick, knock on wood, because it is flu season, and I don't get the flu shot. Um, but overall, like physically, I have to say I feel good. But before, you know, I get into this, I wanted to say that when I was trying to conceive and I heard anybody complain about pregnancy at all, it really would, I don't want to say piss me off, but it, it really hurt me because I was dying to be in their shoes. Like I would have died to have a pregnancy, a healthy, happy pregnancy. But now that I'm pregnant, I just want to address this, that I never knew it was going to be this hard or this frustrating. And it's, and I've had an easy pregnancy. So to say that, I'm not trying to scare anybody that's, you know, that hasn't been pregnant yet, but I never knew the amount of physical, emotional, and mental, um, steps you go through when you're pregnant. Um, Physically, like I said, I'm healthy and I feel good, but there are days like this past weekend, all I did was try on pants at um, a maternity store. Just trying on pants exhausted me to the point where I couldn't do anything for the rest of the day. And the only way I can describe it is, you know, pretend there's a basketball underneath your shirt or put a basketball under your shirt and then try to do things like bend over and put your shoes on or bend over and put your socks on or bend over and put your pants on and take your pants off. Literally, that's all I did was try pants on and I was so exhausted from it. You're short of breath all the time. Um, just things I didn't know that would frustrate me are frustrating me. And I think it's just because I've been, my whole life, I've been like a very active person and pregnancy forces you to slow down. Um, it's just a change that obviously expected pregnancy to be difficult, but I didn't expect to be so frustrated with the difficulties of it is what I'm trying to say. Um, I know there's people out there that say they love pregnancy. They love being pregnant. They feel most beautiful when they're pregnant and that's awesome. And I do love being pregnant and I love feeling the baby move, but I also hate being stressed out all the time about, you know, his health and if he's okay. Um, 
I hate getting up six to eight times a night to go pee. I have not slept a night through in months. Um, and I'm a stomach sleeper. I haven't been able to do that in months. And um, like I said, I hate being short of breath all the time and not having anything to wear. Um, budgeting money to buy a piece of clothing that you're going to wear for, you know, a couple more weeks. Like, it's frustrating and I don't mean to offend anyone when I say that. I don't want to sit here and say like, oh, I'm complaining that I'm pregnant because I'm not. I do love being pregnant, but there are so many frustrating aspects about it that I did not realize. Um, this has completely opened up my eyes and I feel like it's opened up my eyes into even motherhood that I don't know what to expect. I don't know how hard it's going to be. I don't know how frustrating it's going to be. I don't know how scary it's going to be until the baby's actually here. And now that I see that, it's, I feel like I've grown as a woman having this experience. Um, you know, I would see like moms out or whatever and I'd be like, how can they go out when they have a baby? Or, you know, I would make a snap judgment about something and it's like, I have no idea what it's going to be like. How, like, how can I have been that person to judge somebody else? And, um, to have been trying to conceive for so long and then see people complain about their pregnancy and be like, oh my God, that is so rude. How could you complain about your pregnancy when there are people dying to be pregnant? And now I completely 100% understand and it's been just an eye opener for me to like look back, take a step back and realize what people actually go through. So I don't know. I just wanted to address that because if you, if you aren't pregnant or if you have never been pregnant and you might hear someone complain about this or that or say this is hard or this part sucks, um, not to take offense to it and they're not, you know, trying to be rude about it. It's just pregnancy is so much harder than I ever thought it would be. And I have an easy pregnancy. I can't imagine, you know, being one of the women that are sick every single day of their pregnancy and then wanting to have another baby after that. Um, Personally, I definitely do want to have another child after this, but not for a long time. Simply because pregnancy for like 10 months of your life, it's not about you at all. It's, you're just a carrier for the baby. And you have to do everything you can in your power to keep the baby healthy. So that's another thing. I just feel like I'm frustrated because I don't feel like myself. Excuse me. <laughs> you drink. Um, I don't feel like myself with the weight I've put on. I don't feel like myself with how slow I am out of like rolling over in bed, getting out of bed, getting up off the couch, um, having to pee all the time. Like it's just, it's not my body and it's such a weird feeling to like go through that in such a short amount of time. So the video is getting long. I don't mean to ramble. I just wanted to address that and I hope everyone's doing well. I have another video coming up. I'll probably just record it after this, but um, I wanted to go over my first trimester and second trimester must-haves. I'm not going to do a third one, obviously, until I'm through the third trimester, but just some things that if you are planning on getting pregnant or you are pregnant in your early parts of pregnancy, that those are just things that help me get through the first couple months. So um, stay tuned for that, and I will talk to you guys in my next video.